there now solid? I mean, is are the numbers uh, uh, solid in terms of the number of uh, breakthrough cases that go to hospital, the number of breakthrough cases that that ultimately die? Some people are going to hospital still, and some people are dying. But it, are the numbers significantly lower than unvaccinated? Yes, it's like around 14 times less likely to die if you're vaccinated, 11 times less likely to be hospitalized if you're fully vaccinated. And, and I think when you look at breakthrough infections that are severe, that's where there actually is a role for boosters. In people who are above the age of 65, people who have high risk conditions, people who may have gotten the J&J because it seems to top off that immunity, that's where boosters make sense. And that's why they were, they were authorized initially for those groups, because that's where we saw erosion of protection against severe disease, which is what the vaccines were meant to do. So, so, you would, so you would suggest boosters for people with either over a certain age uh, or, or people with uh, pre-existing conditions or comorbidities? Yeah, I do. I think so I, where it comes down to for me is above the age of 65, any medical condition that puts you at higher risk, including being overweight or obese. Uh, and then also people who got the J&J vaccine, because that probably should be a two-dose vaccine. The J&J vaccine didn't actually drop. It just stays around that 70% efficacy. And this, if you get an mRNA boost, it goes up higher. So I think those okay. people can benefit from that. Uh, let me see. So we've got a bunch of questions already. Let me, let me uh, pull out at least the ones about uh, vaccines. So Brian asks, there's some personal advice here. So uh, Brian asks, it looks like the risk from COVID for someone like me under 30 and healthy is very low. I understand that the vaccines lower that risk even further, but at what point is the risk so small that it's not worth lowering? Well, it depends on what you mean by risk. I mean, yes, you're at very low risk for, for being hospitalized, but if you get infected, you could go infect somebody else. That's something that, why would you wanna be in that situation if you can prevent it with the vaccine? And you're gonna have to take 10 days off from work. You're gonna have to tell your contacts that, you are in, that, you, that you're positive and they need to then, uh, they, need to, they need to quarantine and get tested. Why disrupt everybody, everything when you can take a, a safe and effective vaccine and minimize that whole disruption that COVID-19 poses to you? It's not just about severe disease. It's about why, why, have, that, why have that illness when you can prevent it? And we, we take vaccines for lots of things that are even, almost like nuisances to many people. You know, they give children vaccines for chickenpox, which was a nuisance disease. So I think we, we still think, I still think that those are valuable, even if you're not at high risk, but particularly it's important about transmission. I think that's the most important thing. Why put yourself in a, in a situation where you could accidentally uh, infect somebody? And this will, it doesn't take it down to zero, but it lowers it significantly. So do we have a number on how much, you know, if, I, if I'm vaccinated in a particular situation or not vaccinated in a particular situation, how much, uh, how less likely is it for me to get, get the, the virus if I'm vaccinated? Do, do we have any kind of numbers? So that number has changed over time, but yep. in, the, in the immediate months after getting a vaccine, it's probably 60, 70% at least with the Delta variant um, okay. out there right now. And, and then it will drop off. But it's, if, you're, if you're investigating an outbreak, you're not going to be looking at the vaccinated people first as the, the, spreader, the, of, as the spreader. It's likely to be an unvaccinated person. Even though... Because I because people take anecdotal stories and that's what you know they blow them out of proportion and that's you know people can't think statistically and probabilistically so they look at anecdotes uh, so even though you might find they might be a vaccinated super spreader it, it, it's it's super unusual and super rare yes it is and there there were some evidence there there was this thing that happened in Provincetown in Rhode Island where there was this huge this huge festival and people got infected there but that wasn't normal behavior. Of vaccinated people. This was, it was bear week there. It was a big party, lots of alcohol. It was bad weather. Everybody was indoors and lots of singing and yelling. That, that's not normal. And they did have cases there, but all those cases were mild. But in the average life of a vaccinated person, yes, you, you might have some risk of transmitting to somebody else, especially if you're symptomatic. That's why if you, if you get sick, when you're, when you're, even if you're fully vaccinated, you should get tested and know what you, and, and make sure you, you don't expose anybody. But it's, you're contagious for a shorter period of time and it's not likely that you're going to be the one that spreads it. it. It's hard to figure out the magnitude because it all depends on activities and what, what sure. you're doing and what the what the situation is. But in general, it's it's not vaccinated people driving transmission. Yes, they, they can get infected. Yes, there are in, increasingly more breakthroughs and there's going to be more breakthroughs with Omicron. But they're not what's the, they're not the issue in terms of the overall spread. They're, they're, the proportion is much smaller than the unvaccinated groups. So John asks, uh, Amish, would you recommend a healthy pregnant woman get a booster dose if they're already fully vaccinated? Yes, I would. I think pregnant women are at high risk for severe disease. I consider that a high risk condition. 
pregnant okay. women are more likely to be hospitalized, more likely to get in the ICU, more likely to get a C-section, preterm labor, stillbirth, uh, huh. all of that. So I, pr pregnant women should be uh, boosted. And and what's kind of what what is what is the research looking at the effect of the vaccines on on the fetuses? It, it's good actually because okay. the placenta you get transplacental transmission of the antibody, so you can protect your newborn by getting vaccinated when you're pregnant. Uh, there is no untoward effects to the fetus, no higher rates of of miscarriages. Uh, it's actually good for the fetus if its mother gets vaccinated. Thank you for listening or watching The Iran Brook Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbrookshow.com support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see The Iran Brook Show grow, please consider sharing our content, and of course, subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are already subscribers and those of you who are already supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.